Hey, what's up? So today we're going to be discussing task management. Okay, so this is just to do list. And I want to discuss a bit how it differs from note taking and what is really the purpose of task management. So let's get into it. My name is Santi. I make videos and content on productivity and so on. So just a bit of a shout out. Not sure if that's a shout out, but like to the fact, a shout out to the fact that if you're watching this on YouTube, this is also available as a podcast. If you're listening to this as a podcast, the other way around. But yeah, I'm trying to make this. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this kind of format, it's a bit more of an unfiltered talk. Me discussing certain concepts to help you develop better systems, better workflows, and just overall help you achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. So let's get into it. So task management, what really is it? You know, because it comes from the idea of just having a to-do list. You know, we tend to have paper and we just write the things that we're meant to do. Now, the big concept that we really need to understand is why even bother? You know, why write it down? Why, why not keep the things that we need to do in our heads? Actually, a lot of us end up doing that. We might have maybe a note-taking app where we like keeping track of a couple of checklists of things that we need to do. But in order to have a something that really helps us, we need to develop a full system. So I'm going to explain a bit about what that means. Um, maybe even a bit of what are the applications that I use and some of the concepts. Uh, should you be should you be mixing this with your note taking apps? Um, all this kind of stuff, right? So the very first thing that I want to break down is what is the purpose of task management, right? And to me, that is really just being able to get whatever's in your head out into a system that you trust. The more you trust the system, the more useful it's going to be. This is the kind of thing that is like all or nothing. You know, I'm a big fan of Karate Kid and Cobra Kai and that kind of stuff. So <laughs> Mr. Miyagi always says, if you're going to do karate, do it all the way or don't even do it at all. Task management is karate. 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 I don't even know how to pronounce it properly. Sorry. <laughs> if you're going to do karate, let's say the American way, um, go all in or all out. You know, if you step in the middle, it's dangerous. So that is... Mr. Miyagi's wisdom. Task management is not like it's gonna be dangerous if you don't do it properly, but you're not gonna get any of the benefits. <laughs> what am I talking? <laughs> Either way, you're not gonna get any of the benefits of task management if you don't go all the way in, right? This is because you will only be able to have a system that you fully trust if it's something that you can fully rely on, right? So say a task management system in your computer, that is how I do it. I actually, right now, I always change the the apps that I use for task management. The one that I use is called Amazing Marvin. Check out in the description. I actually am collaborating with the creators of Amazing Marvin, so I do have an affiliate link, and that is a way in which you can, you know, support my content. So do check it out if you want. If you want to, I think it's an amazing app. I've tried over, I don't know, let's say ten different applications uh, on task management that can manage my to dos and my projects projects and Amazing Marvin is definitely one of the best ones that I've been able to find. So in that one, I'm able to keep track of every, absolutely everything that I want to keep track on daily basis that I want to achieve, maybe today, maybe this week, this month, as well as longer term projects, right? So that is how I managed to be able to take anything that's in my head into, there's an inbox, which is the place where you capture the ideas or the tasks that you want to do at some point. Then you go through the pr process of deciding when you're going to do them or what part of, you know, what project is it contributing to. And then you, of course, sit down and do it or stand up if you're doing something that needs to be standing up. <laughs> what a clown. Either way. So, you know, like being able to have a system whenever you have something that you absolutely, you put absolutely everything into, then you will know for sure that when you open that application or whatever system that you have, when you open it, you will know that absolutely everything that you need to do is in there. Therefore, there is no doubts about being like, ah, oh, is there anything I kept in my head? You know absolutely everything is in there because if you just keep a couple of things in an app and then you try to keep everything in your head, it's going to become stressful. You don't know where to find it. You don't know if you should have memorized it. Um, you might just lose the information that you need and it becomes chaos and it becomes even more stressful than not having any system at all. You know, a lot of people get by actually by not having any system, you know, and that is always really crazy to me. What a break. <laughs> so I, I, you know, with this, I believe that some people might be able to have a system in their heads that works, but I think most people are just, this is the biggest reason why they're so stressed, so anxious, they don't know what to do, 
they don't really understand why none of the projects are advancing you know so i believe that having a system is going to be able to take a bit of the load of out of your mind you know there's a, the concept of cognitive overload which is when you have so many things stored in your mind that you you can't even like take action on any of them because it becomes overwhelming like trying to recognize how many things you have to do all at once becomes a source of your anxiety so the solution really is to develop a system and the system just requires you to be able to you know for me i believe the best way to develop a system is by trial and error you commit to it you go at least a month and you say okay i'm gonna keep track of absolutely every idea that i want to act upon everything that i have to do maybe i have a, uh, an appointment with the dentist so i write it down i want to do this video call with this person for this project i write it down maybe one day i want to you know like i don't know uh learn how to juggle with five uh <laughs> balls i can juggle with four but one day i'll learn to juggle with five <laughs> and what a show off either way so you know like things that you want to achieve and these are can either be projects or tasks now the big difference that i believe really makes or break your task management system is really understanding what is actionable and what is not right so for this let's talk about projects versus tasks so project is an accumulation of tasks if you put enough tasks together they become a project so the same thing works the other way around if you have a project let's say, you know, filming this video for me, that is made up of individual tasks, you know, things such as connecting the computer to, well, the computer to my camera, which is how I keep track of everything. Um, the microphone, you know, that's another task. So connect the microphone, connect the computer, connect the, um, the camera, uh, set up the lights, you know, because otherwise it looks like this. I have some other colors in the background, as you can see, by the way, how do you like in <laughs> the new studio? I just, we modeled everything, super happy with it. Either way, that's not a good topic. But you know, like each one of these things becomes part of the task that is the project of making this video, right? So in that sense, you can realize that absolutely everything I do or I put in my task management system needs to be an actionable task. Because if I put in there, make a video or, you know, like make a video discussing task management, you know, like where do I start? Like that's not actionable at all. Yes, I mean, if I have it all in my head, maybe if I know the process of making a video well enough, I might not need to write down every step. But for most projects that we do, you know, it's better to actually be able to outline absolutely everything that you need to do so that you know what comes next, so that you know what you should act on and when, you know? There is actually some science that says... I wasn't checking the science, I was taking a bit of water. <laughs> Either way, the science says that we don't really need to finish absolutely everything that's in our mind in order to feel the calm or the tranquility of having an empty to-do list, you know, because if you think about it, life, when, when have you ever said, okay, I finished this homework, maybe in school, or you finished this project in work, or, you know, like you finished the chores in your house and you'd be like, oh, perfect. Now I feel completely calm because there's nothing left to do. When have you ever experienced that? And the reason why you don't experience that because life never like finishes the tasks that we need to do. That's not properly phrased, but you get the idea, right? Like you never are done with the amount of things that you need to do. If you finish the chores in the house, now you need to do another project for work. If you finish that other project for work, now you need to sort out your taxes. You know, like it never ends. There's always something next. And the moment that you free up your mind from the task of a project, your mind goes straight into the next task into the next task. <laughs> what a hard word to say. Into the next task. There we go, right? So what we actually need to do in order to have our mind become and, you know, free a bit of that stress and anxiety of the fact that there's always something else coming, what you can do is write it down because your mind says, when you write this down, you're able to know that it's stored somewhere, that you're gonna be able to do it if you want to, you know, and that's the trick. You should only, not only, but you should develop a system that when you write something down and you maybe you schedule it, put it on a date, or you say you're going to do it, your mind is going to start believing you that you're going to do that if you build a track record for yourself, where you write something down and then you actually do it. Now your mind says, okay, there's no reason to worry because it seems that when I write something down, eventually it gets done. Right. So if you build a track record where you can really trust yourself and your system, then the act of writing this thing down 
into your system, whether that's digitally or paper, whatever you want to use, then your mind is actually going to start believing you and know that writing down is already a way to calm your mind because your mind can trust the fact that that thing is going to be done, right? I'm running out of water here, either way. So now let's move on to the topic of should where should you build a system, right? Because well, if you watch my videos or listen to this podcast or, you know, like if you're into this kind of stuff, you probably already use some tool. You know that I love Obsidian. I love Luxic. I've started to use Notion a lot more recently. And the question is, should you try to have your digital system of task management and project management in the same place where you keep your notes? I used to think that this was a must. But the more I start developing a system that works for me, I realize that it's not. I don't think it's essential. I actually think you might benefit more from having a tool dedicated for task management versus trying to fit it all in the same tool that you use for everything else. Yes, there's some benefits from the context of being able to see your notes together with the tasks that you need to achieve. But I started to realize that it's not an essential thing because you can always like do a bit of you know, some people don't like the idea of context switching, but the benefit of it is that you can actually be able to have a tool that's really, really good at what it does. And then you can use the other tool that's really good at what it does. So in my, in my case, I use Obsidian, Logseek, and even Notion for note taking. That is kind of the place where I organize most of the things that I'm writing, or most of the things that I'm thinking and that I want to compound into knowledge eventually over time. And then I use Amazing Marvin for my task management, which is the one that I briefly mentioned, but it's an amazing tool for just being able to keep track of absolutely everything. And, you know, it's, it's so aesthetic, it's so organized. And there's a lot of other alternatives to this in case maybe you don't like that one. Um, there's Todoist, which is great. That is the one that I really recommend, especially because it's very simple. Uh, there's ClickUp which is ideal if you're collaborating. I really like that one, but the problem is it's not super, um, you know, optimized for personal task management. It's more for teams. So if you have a team, maybe ClickUp is the best one. But to me, Marvin is the absolute best one for, Amazing Marvin is called, is the absolute best one for personal project management. There's so many features. I definitely will be making more videos on this in the future. Uh, but you know, this whole idea of the right tool for the right job is something I've explored in another video. I'm going to leave a link to that in the show notes slash description so that you can check it out because I think that is really going to help you decide what app you want to use. And then I actually, you know, I divide, not fully divide, but I kind of have two tools when it comes to task management versus project management. When it's relevant, I keep it all inside of Amazing Marvin. You know, when I feel that the scope of the project is not um, overwhelming or there, there's not that many moving parts or moving pieces to it. But when it's something a bit more complicated and especially if it's something I need to collaborate on, I use um, Notion for that, right? I have, you know, my history with Notion is quite crazy and love hate, but now, you know, it's been a love hate relationship for a while, but now I'm back at it. I really love it now. <laughs> and for task management, the table views, well, table slash databases are incredible. You know, I, I think they're unbeatable. So Notion actually becomes a bit of the, um, the place where I keep track of more advanced checklists, you know, maybe I do a process that I have to repeat over and over again. And then that's when I do a checklist of all the process. And that's how I know that I'm fulfilling every step for maybe a project that I do on the, on weekly basis or something like that. For instance, I started streaming, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated on that because I'm really excited. I've really enjoyed the, you know, the, yes, the, the whole format of streaming, talking with you guys. So definitely keep an eye for that. I'll be doing it on YouTube. And so for that, I have a whole list of every single step that I need to follow. You know, it, it gets really crazy. There's tons of things, testing audio, uh, setting up the, um, you know, the, the whole process of the stream, you know, making sure that the, the chat is working so that people can chat and I can show the comments, you know, it, either way, like I have a lot of steps that I need to follow. So many technical things that I need to make sure are in place so that nothing breaks in the moment. And for that, I'm using Notion. I also have, you know, I'm doing a bit of consulting for people that want a bit of personalized advice on their particular system. So for that, I also use Notion. I create a workspace where I keep track of absolutely everything that we're doing. Some resources that I recommend, I put them in there. You know, Notion is great for that. That is a bit more of a project management tool that I use. And, you know, I also keep track of more advanced projects that maybe need a bit of more advanced note taking. So 
yes, I could do that in Obsidian, I could do that in Loxic, I could use maybe Amazing Marvin still, but because Notion is really flexible and allows me not only to collaborate, but also to use these table views uh, slash databases and keep track of absolutely everything, notes and tasks in one place, plus filters and all this stuff. I believe Notion is great for that. However, I have used Notion as my everything in the past, you know, note-taking tool, project management tool, task management, absolutely everything. And it gets too complex in my opinion. I think it gets too crazy. Uh, maintaining it is so much work, which is why I still use right now Amazing Marvin for the most part. But whenever I need maybe a project that is a bit, is a bit more advanced that I need to, you know, organize it in, in tables, that is when I still use Notion together with Amazing Marvin, you know, I use them side by side. Again, like check out the other video that I made on using an all-in-one tool versus a bit of the, um, the right tool for the right job mindset, right? Which is what I call the Swiss Army knife, which is, you know, like an all-in-one versus a toolbox mindset, which is like having the right tool for the right job. Check that video out because that might give you a bit more insight. But yeah, those are the topics that I wanted to discuss today. So, you know, just to summarize a bit, I do separate my note taking from my task management and sometimes I mix tools when needed. You know, as long as I know that my system makes sense, that I know what app is doing what, so that whenever I need to search something, I go to that app rather than, you know, not knowing where, where it is. That takes a bit of time, that takes a bit of practice. I'm not saying my system is perfect, but I think I've figured out something really good. If you need any help with this, feel free to reach out. There's gonna be the contact link uh, where you can reach out to me in the show notes slash description. So yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm really happy to hear what you have to say. And yeah, hop on into YouTube if you're listening to this, leave a comment, let me know what are the apps that you're using. Let me know if you haven't tried any of these apps that I'm talking about and you might give them a try. Or, you know, if you need any help or any questions that you might have, let me know. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and let's do a bit of a dramatic exit. But first I need to unlock my phone. <laughs> That's embarrassing. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a great day.